hey guys welcome back to my channel so i have an amazing color correction for you guys today this is my client christine her first time to me we did a consultation just a few weeks ago and this is what we're going to tackle today you see green you see brass there's old color in there somewhere and her end goal is to actually have it grow out and blend seamlessly with her gray since she is now getting more and more every day so if you want to see how i tackle this first color correction session then keep watching So as we begin to get started here, I am mixing up a bowl of my favorite lightener. You guys have seen me bounce back and forth between Schwarzkopf Blommy, Joyco Blonde Life over the last couple of years. I've tried other things in between, but these two are my holy grail. Schwarzkopf, it just, I love it so much. It's so strong, but gentle, never an issue with it. Great consistency, but it always tends to swell every now and then, and I just can't have something not reliable. Joyco never swells at all, and it still gets really good lift. I wouldn't quite say it's as strong as Blommy or equivalent to it, but it's definitely a really, really good lightener. Good lift, you know, it has a nice texture to it, almost like a gummy texture, like a um, OxyCure by Goldwell, which I love, helps stick in the foil, and it has a really good consistency, um, and it works really well, and I never see any damage really badly from it. So we're doing 20 volume, my Holy Grail Lightener volume, my go-to. She's already pretty light on the ends. We see a lot of dark underneath. She does have an undercut, so we're just going to go in and consider this a whole half head, even though it's a little bit more than my half head would usually contain. But that's what I ended up working out with her during our consultation. Like I said before in the beginning of this video, her goal is to have something a little bit more low maintenance and something that grows in and blends seamlessly with her gray. She knows it's not going to happen in one session, but she wants to see how it gets after one and we'll see where we go from there but today we're just going to pack these baby lights in back to back to back to back you know my holy way of doing it baby lights baby lights baby lights it's very tedious it's very heavy it's very long but it will work out perfectly if you are consistent with it and you really care about doing good hair baby lights will always give you an amazing result especially when it comes to gray blending <laughs> Right, so the back is done and I decided to do a paint between this is when I want to do more of a smudge look whether I'm trying to correct something that's going to be left in between the foils because even if I tip out the ends which I plan on doing to get some of those dropouts to be nice and blonde I still won't be able to tease where the foils are that couple of inches so she does have a lot of warmth there be it old color whatever it is it did not lift as well so I'm gonna go with it was all permanent 
So I'm going to go in with 6N, 6T, Reckon Shades EQ with 10 volume, equal parts, and just tap it on there, not bring it down too far because you got to remember, it's a neutral and it's also a T, which is very, 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 very ashy. Um, it's very, very, very scary because she does have pieces that are really light in there. And as you can see, some of her ends are already green from her throwing the titanium or one of the L'Oreal colors, the box dye, on her hair. And it obviously had some yellow in there and it just did not turn out great. So I want to be very careful and just barely tap. And then afterwards, when I'm done with all that one side, you see right now I'm just feathering down to make sure it's blended nicely. I'm going to take my weave comb, make sure I blend it out a little bit, but I am tipping out every single dropout. I am weaving the tease dropouts though. I'm not going to take them all because there's a lot going on in the hair and I'd rather be left with a little extra dimension than have something not lift as well. So the back is completely done, the right side is completely done, now I'm working up on her left side and I'm still doing the same thing, very thin sections, baby lights back to back, minimal subsections, tipping out the ends and I'm also still doing the paint between. I am still using 20 volume around the entire head and I'm also using the 20 volume for the dropouts and you'll notice as I get towards the last two sections in the front I do start tipping out and painting between every 5 to 10 foils just so everything kind of processes around the same. Um, the thing I like about using the same developer around the head, I know some people will start with 10, 20, then work their way up to 30, 40 as each bowl is mixed. I don't do that. It's very often I ever do. I find that 10, 20 volume, even 7 with Blonde Me, it, whatever you're using, if it's the same thing, it has a certain potency. So in the back where we started, think of it as that bleach is like 30 miles an hour right now, where the bleach I just put in the last foil is at 100 miles an hour. So they eventually even out. One will slow down. The other one will catch up. That's how it always works. I always let my clients process. I do not rinse right away. Um, on the box of bleach where it says process no longer than 45 minutes or 60 minutes, whatever it is, it varies between each bleach. Um, that's the time you're supposed to allow it to sit for. Not the minute it starts hitting the hair when it's all applied just like a hair color i see a lot of people get scared of bleach hair schools usually make you scared of bleach they tell you not to overlap the hair don't leave it on too long i um even see people doing videos on youtube or just other hairstylists i know personally who will go in and they'll start foiling the back and then after the first section in the back is complete they'll have an assistant come and start pulling those foils while they're starting to foil the other half of the head in the back that's not, that's crazy. I don't use heat. I know my clients might sometimes get bored. I tell them to bring their phone, bring a book, bring work from their laptop, their computer, whatever they want to bring because they know when they come to my salon and my chair, they're going to be sitting and processing. I'm not saying to let the hair sit if it's done. If you feel like the hair is absolutely done or you feel like it's weak, it's not strong, rinse the foils off that are ready to go. I tend to never have to do that. I also don't like doing that. I only do that if I absolutely have to because there, no matter what happens, I've had two bad experiences in the past where I'll literally go in and say, for example, I'll start in the back on a client for the first session if I don't know their hair like I did with Christine today. If the back had to finish sooner or it got fragile or something like that, I would just dip them in the sink, rinse it, shampoo it the best I could. But there's been twice out of like five times of me ever doing that where the bleach actually in the virgin hair that was in between as the subsection lifted a little bit and it actually gave us hot roots. So that was a mess. Happened to me twice. Had to fix it. So I tend to not do that unless I need to. Like I said, I will if I have to. But usually when you're doing the same developer, you don't. As long as you're doing low, slow, and you're watching it steady. 
I always get questions also on my timing and how I got so quick with foiling. I'm not going to crop or cut anything right from now on from this point of this part of the foiling. And I want you guys to see me in real speed in real time. I always say a little bit of tips and tricks is make sure when you're sectioning your amount of hair, whether you use a comb or clip, make sure you try to do it as best as you can in one sectioning, not to take too long. That adds a lot of time, a lot of minutes if you keep messing up. And make sure you grab enough lightener that you're comfortable of saturating without adding too much or too little right away. For those of you interested, I plan on making an updated version on how to become faster when foiling, all my greatest tips and tricks up to date 2023 don't forget to like share subscribe all that good stuff you know we're still growing and i'm so excited to be back whipping video after video out for you guys Right, guys you can see how well she lifted the root area where her natural color was a little bit warmer I do find there was some kind of permanent in that area that's why we didn't lift as well she got to a good seven eight but on those ends that were already a little bit green or a little bit you know blonde with a little bit of you know brass to them they lifted beautifully we have Olaplex 2 on the mids and ends as a barrier and I am going in and root shadowing her with six ends six and eight equal parts Reckon Shades EQ we really wanted to do a tap and go for a tap and eventually maybe not do anything on the base just so it blends in seamlessly but I do have to counteract tones. This is a first session. It is a lot of color correcting going on. And you can see there was some old permanent there because when I open the hair, you see how brassy it really is. Once I finish applying this root shadow, we're going to let her process for about 10 minutes. Olaplex number two is on the mids and ends as a barrier for when I blend it. And I'm going to tone her with 8V, 8T, 9VG, 9P, and 10T. Right, guys there you have it no filter look how beautiful these final results are one more session we should be able to kick through the remainder of that brassy root area but the shadow worked out perfect with counteracting that with the paint between and the shadow it all came together beautifully and the tone is gorgeous it's almost perfect she's happy with it i'm happy with it let me know down below what you guys think i'll see you in the next one as always guys so long for now Mwah.